So as I mentioned in the episode's intro, science fiction can often be used as a means of getting society to ask itself very interesting and thought-provoking questions. Uh, questions that uh, get to the nature of reality, uh, the nature of society, and everything else in between. When the story turns to exploring how people would respond and react to an extraterrestrial encounter, things can take a very strange turn indeed. This month's interviewee provides us with just such a story. Please join me in welcoming indie sci-fi writer, Kay Griffin-Peterson. Hey Kay, thanks for joining me on the show. Hi Garrett, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So uh, tell me about your book. This is your first one. Uh, what's it all about? Thanks. Yeah, my book is called Jane Doe, and it's the story of a town where women are starting to find themselves mysteriously and inexplicably pregnant. And then they disappear. Uh, our main character is a man named Sam who's watching all of this happen. And he's watching with a certain degree of skepticism as to why it's happening to these women until he finds that it happens to him too. Whoa. Uh, that sounds uh, really cool. A little scary. Um, so how did you get into writing? Uh, was this something that you've always wanted to do? Actually, I didn't really consider myself a writer, especially a sci-fi writer before now, um, but I've had this story kind of rattling around in my head for a while. I have friends in the writing community that introduced me to NaNoWriMo, so I thought it would be fun to try and get it out and do something creative and challenging. Uh, I ended up writing the story over on my phone over the course of like two weeks. Once I started, I, I found I had a lot of ideas flowing all at once. I just couldn't write the story fast enough. Uh, this has been a really great opportunity to express myself. And it's been really gratifying, especially being able to publish and share my work. The writing community on Instagram and now Threads is so welcoming and really supportive. And I made some really awesome connections. The whole experience has been really addicting and it makes you just want to write more. That's really awesome. Yeah, I found the same thing with uh, my connections on social media as well. So you mentioned that this story uh, being in your head long before you started writing it, what inspired you to write Jane Doe? Uh, where did this story come from? Uh, I grew up watching the X-Files and old episodes of Twilight Zone and Outer Limits with my father. So sci-fi has always had a special place in my heart. But what inspired this story partly was this obscure movie called Dark Skies, where a family is being targeted by this alien entity. And as they're trying to protect their children from this very real threat, Everybody is, they talk to, they're trying to get help from, thinks that they're crazy or they're bad parents. And that question just stuck with me. How do you make people believe you when the unfathomable, unfathomable is happening? Uh, what happens when you, the skeptic, become the victim, for lack of a better word? I think that's kind of the world we live in now. We have so much information and access, but everything filters through what we think we know. So we stop listening to what other people are saying because we have everything figured out. I wanted the story to be something readers would want to talk about and ask questions about when they were done. By itself, the story can feel really weird without that understanding. And the ending was deliberately ambiguous because I wanted readers to walk away deciding for themselves how it, how it ended. Either you walked away thinking the characters were being messed with by aliens, or you walk away thinking the main character is just mentally unwell and needs serious help. Wow, that's that's uh, pretty heavy. Uh, so a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, writers are going in for doing series or like kind of a franchise type of thing. That seems to be the big push uh, in literature these days. Um, so are you planning a follow-up or a sequel to Jane Doe? That's actually funny. I've had people ask if there's more coming uh, or if I'm writing a follow-up. People in the It Was Definitely alien, Aliens camp especially ask for more confrontations with aliens from my characters. I've been working on two shorter works for the past couple of years that take place in the same world that deal with different characters and does a bit more exploration and expl explanation into what's happening. But I haven't decided really what to do with it yet, whether to publish or not, they're still very much in the works. Yeah, that's understandable. There's sometimes you hit that point where you're not sure if it's 
the right time to publish or even if you should. Um, and that can always be a challenge when exploring your creative options. So that brings me to my next question. What has been the biggest challenge or the biggest obstacle that you have faced in the creation of your work? For me, it was really just plucking up the courage to publish the story and put it out there. Uh, this is the type of story that I like. This is something I like to read, but I worry people would find it too weird. It's kind of that timeless struggle, putting your whole self out there, even when it's for fun and this low stakes project that this one started out being, it's still very much me and a representation of who I am. From the beginning, taking that first step to share, I've been met with nothing but positivity and support. Um, and the highlights of this whole thing has been when both my aunt and my dad read the book and loved it. So that helped me feel so much more comfortable. It's also received some decent reviews on Amazon and Goodreads. And that's also been really encouraging. That is fantastic. Um, so this was this was your big struggle, um, and I'm sure you probably got advice along the way. What kind of advice would you offer to other would-be authors that are listening or watching this interview? Really, don't be afraid to share what you've written. Your story might be weird, or it might be personal, or it might be different from what people expect, but that doesn't mean you give up on writing that story. Um, it's it's hard to it's hard to always uh, swallow that you're not going to be everyone's preference, but truly there is an audience for everybody, and someone is going to enjoy what you wrote. That is very true. I mean, if science fiction is a niche market. Same with fantasy, which is what I write, and it's sometimes it's hard to find uh, the right reading market for yourself, uh, especially if you're an indie author like you and myself. And so, yeah. Um, that's, that's awesome. That is really, really great advice. Uh, so Kay, we're coming up to the end of the interview. One last question. How can people get in contact with you? How can they get a hold of your work and copies of Jane Doe? Uh, I'm on social media, both Instagram and threads at, uh, my name, Kay Griffin Peterson, all one word. As for the book, it is currently on paperback through Amazon. Uh, it's also being produced for audio as we speak, and hopefully will be available by the time this interview airs. That's awesome. Well, Kay, thank you so much for joining me for this month on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. If you're interested in picking up copies of Kay's book, Jane Doe, or connect with her through social media, you can find those links down in the video description.